And Indiana's most prolific serial killer left traces of his victims behind. Today, investigators went searching for answers to decades-old questions. News 8's Garrett Berquist explains what lies ahead. The current owner says as far as he knows, this is the first time dogs have ever searched the property. He says he hopes this brings some closure to the families of Herb Baumeister's victims. We don't go looking for the bones, but they, they do turn up. Perhaps a dozen families' questions hinge on what these dogs find. I don't think we really know. Um, the official number, I was always told, was 11 because they found 11 left hand thumb bones. So they know there was at least 11 left hands. But because of the sheer number of bones and the inability to DNA test them, the estimate that I was always told was 17 to 20. 11 cadaver dogs from Indy Canine Search and Rescue spent the day combing the woods behind Robert Graves' home. At one time, the house and the land around it belonged to Herb Baumeister, seen here in an archival News 8 interview. Authorities believe Baumeister lured young men to his Westfield home in the 1980s and 1990s and murdered them. He took his own life in 1996 before authorities could question him. I can tell you after the Dahmer show on Netflix, uh, was uh, shown uh, interest here uh, went up quite a bit. People want to see where things happen, and this is a pretty infamous case. Graves has now owned the property for 15 years. I honestly, if someone doesn't ask me about it, I don't think about it on a daily basis. Uh, when we first moved here, I certainly did. But over time, it's been enough time that I just don't think about it. The Hamilton County Coroner's Office says searchers marked areas where the dogs appeared to have found something. Officials say they'll talk to law enforcement and the University of Indianapolis's lab to figure out the best way to proceed. Graves says he hopes the new search will answer everyone's questions once and for all. I hope they find any remains that have not been found and they get some identification so the families can have some kind of closure. Graves says if you have a loved one who went missing in the 1980s or 1990s, you should come forward and provide a DNA sample. He says this will help investigators identify remains more quickly. In Hamilton County, Garrett Bergquist, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook.